Last week, I got this pretty cool opportunity to perform at a red carpet awards show with my band. It was the first ever Utah Music Awards. We didn't win any awards, though we were nominated for two, but it was kind of a pop-oriented event, so I feel pretty accomplished just having infiltrated it with my dark rock music. You know, we've had quite a few conversations here, and I feel like we're getting to know each other nicely. But I've just realized that I've failed to really go in depth about one of the biggest parts of my life. I mean, I mention music and being a musician and my band once in a while as a side note, but this is kind of the main focus of my life right now. Most of my greatest dreams and aspirations have everything to do with music, without which I wouldn't know you or be having any of these coffee dates with you. So here you go. This is Zach. You've known him as my boyfriend and endured through a great deal of our snuggle footage, but he's also my drummer and a very dedicated one at that. He's one of the few around this area that seriously studies his craft nearly every day for hours. There's a lot of great drummers in this world. I mean, it's a pretty competitive instrument with an endless rabbit hole of complexity involved in its mastery. But the greatest drummers are the musical ones, and Zach is this kind of drummer. He somehow manages to wield these random exploding mathematical equations and create grooves that feel like music with so much melody and emotion involved. This is Austin. He plays the lead guitar with this unique kind of virtuosity that just can't be labeled as cliché from any angle. Every melody he touches turns to gold. This guy is also a brilliant songwriter and the first songwriter I've ever been able to write with successfully. Seriously, we songwriters are creatures of our process, and as I mentioned before, my process is mostly staring at the wall and thinking. But somehow, when I sit down with Austin, we're both comfortable and inspired enough to create things. The first time he and I and two guitars ever got together in the same room, we wrote an entire song in a few hours. This is Kyle. He might be the most professional musician I know. He teaches music lessons as a day job, and he's definitely the music theory guru of the band. He could teach each band member music theory lessons for months. And since bass players are by far the most difficult traditional band members to find, this guy is in demand. He plays in like four other bands that I know of. He can just sit down and fit into any genre, or just invent his own sound with his wide array of obscure bass instruments, like a two or a five-string electric upright bass, a war guitar, an NS stick, or a seven-string fretless bass. Yeah, I know. Together, we are my fair fiend, and these guys breathe so much life into my strange, dark, melancholy story songs. This is what we do. When I tell people that I make my living as a songwriter and musician, it all sounds so glamorous to them. And I won't deny that it feels pretty badass, like living on the edge and giving the finger to society's standards of what a 28-year-old woman ought to be. And bold though it may seem, I almost feel that I didn't really choose it. I have to do this. No, I'm serious. If I were somehow kept from creating music by some powerful force, I would end up in an asylum. Guaranteed. Especially since I sometimes feel dangerously close to that fate as it is. You see, in order to make music into my whole life, my entire living, I must somehow make my art valid to society. My entire workday consists of trying to find ways to become valid to people, or desperately trying to maintain validity with those to whom I've already proven valid. It's like this constant circle of, yeah, I like myself. Man, I do cool stuff. Hey, hey people, look at my cool stuff. Do you like my cool stuff? Please, please like it. Let's see, did enough people like my cool stuff this month for me to buy groceries? Oh, thank God. Actually, thank you since I'm not entirely aware whether or not any specific god has much to do with it or not. But that's a conversation for another time. Let the preaching begin later. I found myself an needle and thread. Hello, 
Hello, and welcome to the beginning of the end of my brain log, dedicated entirely to my band. Please, please do us a favor and follow My Fair Fiend on whatever social networks you prefer. It has actually proven to be one of the more difficult tasks in my life to take an existing YouTube audience and move them to a brand new project. So please, if you haven't taken the time to listen to My Fair Fiend, we have our own YouTube channel with a couple music videos up already and more coming. Please subscribe to My Fair Fiend on YouTube. We also have that same username on Twitter and Facebook. And last but not least, we have our own website where you can sign up for a mailing list so that I can always let you know about the exciting new stuff. So I know those things seem insignificant, but they help us look more important to promoters and venue owners and stuff, so. I have to be honest, even these videos, the vlogs that I did before, the brain logs now, I pretty much do them for the sole purpose of connecting with an audience for my music. So please give us a chance. And hey, if you, if you hate the music, if you don't like us at all, you're still welcome here, I guess. No, just kidding, you really are. I like you guys. Okay.